Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the uh, Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel and the All-Star Wrestling Review Series for the 10th of October, uh, 1981. We are fast approaching the end of 81, we are fast approaching the beginning of 82, and that means primarily the, I wouldn't say end of the series, but at least delay of the series as we begin. Uh, to go into Mid-Atlantic Wrestling when there is no more All-Star Wrestling to look at. Anyway, we move into the 10-10 um, uh, edition. 10-3 uh, is not available on the network anywhere, so I haven't seen that. Re-airing of the Tony Atlas Johnny Raz match from 11-10-79. Not sure why that matters. Uh, Greg Valentine and Kurt Henning. Uh, Valentine, of course, leading the victory. Via figure four, Valentine and Henning would wrestle, I think, a couple times in the WWF in the later years, although maybe not because they both were on the heel side predominantly and they did, did, did come out that way. But anyway, uh, Valentine in the blue or the purplish robe, kind of a regal purple robe, and again, uh, we see the red, white, and blue ropes uh, debuting this year. Henning looking super thin, uh, grabs a headlock on Valentine, holds it there for a little while, doesn't get everything he wants on that, but uh, Henning obviously having the necessary tools to continue his uh, career as he continues to do so here, and uh, Greg Valentine send, takes Henning back to the corner, Irish whip, Henning sends him out into the other corner, and Valentine takes a hard buckle but does not leave his feet. Uh... Then there is the kind of laying back of Henning across the middle ropes and a um, back suplex by Greg Valentine before he hooks on the figure four. Figure four obviously giving Valentine the victory and the Grand Wizard uh, is happy when Henning is cast to the outside. Henning also leaves via a stretcher, which is not good if you are the future Mr. Perfect. Anyway, we move to... Next match in the series, which is Angelo Mosca with Captain Lou Albano. Albano probably looking more rotund than ever before, if not close to it. And he faces off against, um, in this particular uh, event, Angelo Mosca defeats Angelo Gomez and Johnny Ringo in a handicap match. Two on one, putting um, the, the wonder that is uh, Mosca in the ring with two guys kind of working over the arm. Of course, this is probably as a direct result or indirect result of the continuation of the problems uh, that uh, were caused with him and Pat Patterson earlier. Obviously, the idea if he could take out Patterson, a former Intercontinental Champion, there would not be the need to continue to fight in a more traditional one-on-one -on -one style. Also, Patterson returns this week talking with Mil Moskris. Moskris talking about enjoying European wrestling, enjoying... Uh, wrestling in Central America, Latin America, and the like, and also kind of wearing three Halloween covers, colors, black and orange, and uh, black and gold and orange leather mask. Uh, then we kind of see, or hear, uh, Maskeris talk about uh, loving the fans, loving wrestling in the Northeast, and ultimately being very happy with his progress in the area for lack of of better terminology. Then we continue to go uh, in the vein of uh, more matches here. Pedro Morales up next. Morales, of course, uh, is here and uh, taking on Jerry Johnson. 320, uh, 320, uh, no, hang on. Um, uh, 327 uh, with a backbreaker over the knee. Odd finish for Morales, except if they're going to put him in a uh, match with Mosca, as uh, Morales primarily known for finishing with the uh, Boston Crab or other submission-related holds, occasional a small package, but um, um, his opponent is on the receiving end of a couple of arm drags, basic maneuvers, and then uh, take-ups. Uh, the one-handed or one-armed backkick across the knee is a victory for um, Pedro Morales, your former Intercontinental and World Champion at the time. Uh, we continue to move into a uh, run of connectors there. Uh, this happens to be um, 
Tony Atlas is your uh, match from 1979. I'm actually not going to cover that because we've covered it on previous editions. Jumping ahead to first run content, we go to another tag team uh, contest here. At least I believe tag team contest. Um, and yeah, that is the uh, run of uh, the continuation of tag team champions Tony Gurria and Rick Martel defeating Baron and Kelsey Quinter and Jose Estrada, uh, 741, when Gurria pins Estrada with a reverse roll-up. Um, match that kind of has been seen before in various combinations. Obviously, the tag team champions still need a competition, and they try to keep the tag team champions or the intercontinental champion almost on every week's television program, making the champions mean something, which is very rarely done today, if at all. Anyway, uh... Sakuna and Estrada have teamed before, even against this tag team combination. Uh, the tag team champions are, in fact, um, kind of dominated in the early stages of this particular match with uh, more head scissors and the like done by Guerrilla. Guerrilla tries to take things down to the canvas, whereas Martel tries to move around with drop kicks and other basic things. Baron Mikel Sakuna gets uh, his man in a head scissors, allowing Gurria to tip out of the head scissors with a uh, modified uh, uh, kind of uh, head scissors headstand there, and basic things continue. Uh, the brawling from the champions leads to some degree of simplicity as it relates to things there, and uh, attempted... Uh, run of a uh, arm drag. Martel eventually comes in. House of Fire a little bit more than normal. Uh, Martel also trying to get, eventually to get uh, double team on the champions. Champions eventually do fire back and get a victory. And of course, Martel and Guria are protected. Looking good as your tag team champions with the roll of Guria getting it on Estrada. To close the program, uh, we then go to Ron Shaw and uh, Mil Mascaris. Uh, either Mascaris is bigger than I thought or Shaw is smaller than I thought because while they aren't standing toe to toe, uh, there is less of a size discrepancy than would be imagined. Fireman Carry, another basic wrestling hold by Shaw, uh, will come through and um, Mascaris takes the foot of his adversary. And tries to get an advantage where he can. Uh, cradle. Falling cradle suplex. Gets the victory for Moscaris. Uh, almost anyway. And Moscaris goes to the top rope with the cross body. And gets a victory that way. One, two, three. No Moscaris successful in this particular match. We'll be back with more right after this. <laughs> 